Never had <laughs> Okay. Alright. Hi J Rod, how you doing tonight? Or no, it's it's not night, it's it's afternoon. Oh my goodness. And okay, so I do apologize in advance for the audio. I um I, I um I forgot to bring my actual headset and oh thank you <laughs> trying to go for like a Miss Frizzle look. <laughs> yeah, so thank thank Hey, thanks for joining me today, J-Rod. I appreciate it. And welcome, welcome, everyone. My name is Michi Gohano, or or for this stream, my name is Miss Michi. And yeah, we're going to be doing an education stream on butterflies today. And oh yeah, I saw that. I'm, I'm sorry, sweetie. Well, ho hopefully you'll get over it really fast, and hopefully I can give you some relaxing time as we learn more about butterflies today. I was about to say, Miss Frizzle, is that you? <laughs> it's it's me in a Miss Frizzle dress that I totally didn't rig at the last minute. <laughs> but yeah, so this is dress number one. I am currently also going to be working on many more. Next planned one is going to be the space-themed one, which is my favorite. But yeah, so today we are going to be doing butterfly basics. I'm basically just going to be reading these. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask as well. Or if there's a particular butterfly you guys want to learn about, yeah, I'll definitely help that. And yes, hello, Rose. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. <laughs> and yeah, let's see. Yes, yes. Uh, it's. I, I think it was the the episode where they went to Pluto. Uh, Miss Frizzle wore a dress that looked like a solar system. And a space, yes! But yeah, welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. So yeah, basically, we're gonna start with butterflies. If you guys have any questions or have any, uh, have anything... Yeah, basically, if you have questions, feel free to interrupt at any time. I will gladly answer them to the best of my abilities. So, yeah, yeah! So, let's get started. And my plan is only to go for an hour because, you know, talking for too long. <laughs> what is a butterfly? Well, Rose, a butterfly is an insect of the order Lepidoptera that belongs to either the subfamily Pillow. Eh. Oh, nice. <laughs> I get to. Oh, we get to practice my Latin. <laughs> okay. So the superfamily Papillo. Let's see. Pap. Pilio no Noedea, or the superfamily Hesperiodea, the skippers. Ooh. Some authors would include also members of the superfamily Hediolida, the American butterfly moths. Although the skippers are usually counted as butterflies, they are somewhat intermediate between the rest of the butterflies and the and the remaining Lepidoptera, the moths. In reality, the separation of Lepidoptera into butterflies and moths is common, not a taxonomic classification, and does not involve taxonomic rank. Butterflies add important, add important economic, ecological, and aesthetic values. As pollinators of flowers, butterflies aid in the cultivation of fruits and vegetables, and in the propagation of wild plant species. Ecologically, they serve as food for many animals, reptiles, fish, amphibians, birds, mammals, other insects, and spiders. Because of their sensitivity to environmental changes, they can serve as warning signs of deleterious conditions. Aesthetically, human fascination with butterflies had led to their being featured in many paintings, poetry, and books, and as symbols, symbols used for jewelry, wallpaper, and so forth. Yep, yep, I can agree there. <laughs> like, I... Like, I had trouble deciding what, like, what butterfly pattern I wanted to use for the dress. <laughs> but I finally settled on these ones. You know, people, most people would recognize. And, let's see, where was I? Let's see, butterfly watching is a popular hobby. The life cycle of butterflies also has been depicted as an apt metaphor for eternal life as the earthbound caterpillar transform into the ethereal butterfly. <gasps> oh, Kasia! How are you doing tonight? I mean, <laughs> I, I, I need to, I, I'll need to get used to this. Good afternoon, Kasia. Hope you're having a good time. Let's see, but butterfly watching? Like bird watching, but buggier? 
Uh, pretty much spoon. And how are you doing this afternoon? Oh, it's night for you? Oh, so I was correct. <laughs> yeah. For me, I'm, I've decided that I'm going to try and do these more in the afternoon. Uh, mostly either on Sunday or Monday when I actually have time. But yeah, I hope you're having a good night where you are. And yeah, for the next hour or so, we're going to be learning about butterflies today. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, because I recently got a job at the butterfly house, so I I really do need to brush up on my, on my uh, butterfly and moth knowledge. Oh, yeah, and if you guys are playing the community game, I still do have that running. And I also opted in to participate in the... Um, in the Beast Ball, or not, not Beast Ball, um, what are they called? The ones that come from the Wornholes. I opted in to play that event today, so if you guys happen to play the game, go ahead and give it a try. And I brought, bought several great balls for this occasion. Ah, yes, my night is actually midnight, 4 a.m. Oh, goodness. <laughs> well... <laughs> And I also found my passion for music, so I'm making my own music now. Oh, that's wonderful, Kazuya! Well, I wish you luck and hope you have fun! And let's see. People who study or collect butterflies or the closely related moths are called lepidoteres. Yep, yep. <laughs> and the study of butterflies is known as butterflying. An older term for a lepidoteres is an arolea. Some butterflies are now considered endangered species, and the Zeres blue butterfly is the first known butterfly to become ex extinct in North America. Mm, that's sad. So yeah, when when I first got actually the um, uh, the volunteer position, I was kind of surprised to learn that butterflies have scales. Let's see. Yeah, and even though school is keeping me busy too much, it kind of helps me with the music experience. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people started school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but butterflies have scales. <laughs> I didn't know that either until like six months ago. <laughs> and butterflies belong to the Lepidotela or scaly winged insects. So, Lepidos means scale, and Pateron means wings in Greek. Nice. Yep. Oh, wait! That name is Greek? Huh. I, I always thought it was Latin. Okay. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Like mini dragons. <laughs> Butterflies have fine scales on their wings that look like a fine powder. These scales are colored and result in giving striking colors and patterns to many butterflies while providing cryptic colors and camouflage patterns to others. When touched by humans, the wings tend to lose some scales. If too many scales are lost, the butterfly's ability to fly will be impaired. The scales on the butterfly wings have many properties, mostly optical, that interest scientists. The patterns that may they make are also seen as the best animal system for understanding the de uh, developmental and genetic processes that produce morphological variation in nature. Oh, yep, yep. Moths have scales too. What was I gonna say? Oh, yeah, yeah, so about touching the butterfly's wings. So, uh, at the butterfly house, one of the first things we tell you is never go for the butterfly. Let the butterfly come to you. Because, like, if you like, if you're chasing a butterfly and you catch it, but catch it, but if you catch it and accidentally touch its wings, you could damage it. So that's that's always like the first rule I said, like uh, when I was uh, when I was volunteering there first. Oh, yep. Let's see. Gonna bring out my notepad, writing this down, and turning this into a textbook dedicated to butterflies? <laughs> hey, if you want to, go ahead. Or... I think... This is also the website that I'm using right now. 
And also, uh, please let me know if the music, uh, if the music is too loud. So if you guys want to follow along in that, go ahead. And let's see. Butterflies have been used as model organisms for a variety of fields of study spanning ecology, evolutionary biology, and conservation biology. Much of the theory on apotism... It ain't that loud? Okay, okay, that's good. Yeah, because I didn't bring my actual uh, headset with me this time. I'm, I, I'm currently cat-sitting for, for a friend. And I think I brought everything but except that. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. A mimicry arose from 19th century studies by Lepidoteris studying butterflies in the New World and the Orient. Considerable research by H. F. Niehaut and others have been done by developmental biology that have provided insights into the development of color patterns in butterfly wings. Nice. Here we go. Classification. Presently, butterflies are cap... Uh, Classified into two superfamilies. Let's see. Hesperiodea, Hesperi consisting of the skeppers, and Peplionodea, or I, or true butterflies. Skeppers, different. Yeah, I learned. Uh, I learned the common names before the <laughs> before the Latin names, which usually it's it's not good to do that. You should learn the Latin names first before, or apparently Greek. <laughs> Skippers differ in several important ways from the remaining butterflies. Skippers have the antennae clubs hooked backwards, have stocky bodies, and possess stronger wing muscles and have better eyes. Skipperfly. <laughs> However, Hesperiodea and Peplionoidea are considered sister taxa, so the butterflies collectively are thought to constitute a true clade. Some modern taxom uh, taxonomists place them in the superfamily Pap uh, Papliodea, distinguishing the skippers from the other butterflies at the series only level. And this system, uh, Papi, consists of the. Yeah, I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna shorten it down to Papi and Hesper. Let's see, in this system, Papi consists of the series Hesperforms, with one family only, the skipper family. And the series Pebli, <laughs> of course they change it, Peplionium forms with five families. Where skippers are classified in the super family Hesper, it also includes the one family Hesperidae. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, would you rather me pronounce it every single time? <laughs> Even I get tired of that. Let's see, the five families of true butterflies usually recognized in the uh, Papilloniidae are family, Papilloniidae, the swallowtails and the birdwings. Hey, yep. <laughs> Let's see, Pieridae, the whites and the yellows, the family Lic Liconidae, the blues and coppers, also called the gossamer wing butterflies. Let's see, the Riodinidae, the melmark butterflies and the family at Nymphalidae, the blue-footed butterflies. And some common well-known butterfly species, and yep, there are, there are between 15,000 and 20,000 species of butterflies worldwide. Some well-known species from around the world include all of these ones. <laughs> Let's see, I think if you play Animal Crossing, like, you'll recognize, like, Swallowtail, Bird Wings, let's see, the Whites and Yellows, the Blue and Copper. I think there is a Painted Lady in Animal Crossing. Oh, oh, no, 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 Kazuya. And all together of, um, of the Lepidotera, there are, uh, 140,000 species of butterflies and moths. Moths take up the majority of that species. Let's see. Let's see. I need a sound effect keyboard panel with all the common Latin names so you can just press a button and have the name read. <laughs> yeah, that would be easy. <laughs> Doesn't help that I have a lisp. <gasps> yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. 
But yeah, I'll have to take a look at that. And here we go. Difference between butterflies and moths. Butterflies and moths are often confused with each other. This is understandable, given the separation of the Lepidoptera into butterflies and moths is a common classification, not one that is recognized by taxonomists. The moths are an artificial group, defined only as everything in the order that is not a butterfly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when you get down to the basics, that's pretty much it. Butterflies, on the other hand, are a natural group. So they are all considered to have descended from a single common ancestor, but they do not have a formal taxonomic rank. Although there are many ways of dis distinguishing a butterfly from a moth, there are exceptions to every rule. Among some of the means of distinguishing them are antennae. Most butterflies have thin, slender, filamentous antennae, which are club-shaped at the end, while moths often have comb-like or feathery antenna, or filamentous and unclubbed. The distinction is the basis for the non-standard taxonomic divisions in the Lepidoptera, the Ro Ropalcera, clubbed horn, the butterflies, and the Henrocera, valid, varied horn, the moths. And wing coupling mechanisms. Many moths has a fulium, which is a filament arising from the hind wing and coupling with barbs at the forewing. The frenulum has been observed, can be observed only when a specimen is in hand. Butterflies lack these structures. Let's see, controversial opinion, moths are prettier than butterflies. Actually, I'm going to agree with you there, because uh, my, my favorite one, my favorite, absolute favorite one is the Atlas moth. I love the Atlas moth. Yeah, actually, my class never did the butterfly projects. Um, my, when I was a part of the, the high school environmental group, Oh, you got an Oshawott! <laughs> I got a Piplup. <laughs> and let's see, where were we before before Pokemon distracted us? <laughs> let's see, I believe we were at Pupae. Most, com most moth calipeters spin a cocoon made of silk within each of the metamorphoses, which in the metamorphose into the pupal stage. Most butterflies, on the other hand, form an exposed pupa, which is also termed as a chrysalis. Yeah, so... Oh, I'm sorry. And, ah, uh, nobody caught it. <laughs> oh, well. We tried. And, actually, I need to... There we go. Alright. Actually, need to... Need to adjust just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay. And, but yeah, so uh, part of my job is to uh, 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 comb through, at, like at least once a week, we'll go through and comb through, uh, comb through the butterfly house looking for eggs and cocoons or chrysalises, uh, because uh, if those hatch into, <laughs> if those hatch into caterpillars before we can find them, they could potentially um, sting a guest. Uh, because yeah, some of the caterpillars are venomous. Granted, it's not gonna it's not gonna kill you, but it, it'll hurt. <laughs> it'll hurt. <laughs> and hey, look, another Pokemon. Oh, oops. Oh, yep. Some species of caterpillars do sting. Not not everyone, but a few. So yeah, it's just like, for the most part, a calipeter is not gonna sting you if it thinks you're a threat, but that like they they potentially can. And oh, hey, Squid, how you doing? And it looks like you're out of Pokeballs. <laughs> Let's see the fuss <laughs> hashtag rigged. Yeah, yeah, it's, sorry, Rose, that's, that's kind of, they kind of have to be, though, you know, because, you know, nature, nature is cruel, you gotta, you gotta learn to protect yourself, so they have that venom to protect themselves from being eaten. The fuzzier, the more painful? Well, I mean, you're not wrong. 
it's like the yeah the majority of the ones we have at uh, at the butterfly house I work at yeah like the fuzzy ones do tend to be the venomous ones. And ha ha, I caught the deli bird. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Rose. <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, my, my girlfriend is also, um, she's allergic, she's allergic to bee stings, so I, I, I understand that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's see, all my facts can be summed up to, well, you're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're, you're not wrong, but it goes into more specifics than that. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Let's see, I mean, animals have defensive abilities to protect themselves from, you know, humans. I mean, yeah, yeah, we can, we can count as a predator. <laughs> and burbs, yep. And then there's frogs, there's lizards, like, a lot of things eat bugs. There you go, squid. <laughs> and I also have... <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> We're getting distracted. We're supposed to... I mean, we, we still are, but... Uh, this is what I get for putting in the community game. <laughs> but... But yeah, basically, ev almost everything tries to eat bugs. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Which another, another adaptation these guys have, let's see, is the coloration of their wings. Most butterflies have bright color on their wings. Nocturnal moths, on the other hand, are usually plain brown, gray, white, or black, and often with obscuring patterns of zigzags or swirls. Oh yeah, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be ironic if a butterfree showed up? <laughs> Let's see. Which help camouflage them as the rest as they rest during the day. Yep, yep. However, many day flying moths are brightly colored, particularly if they are toxic. A few butterflies are also plain colored like the cabbage white butterfly. And structure of the body. Moths tend to have a stout and hairy or furry looking bodies while butterflies have slender and smoother abdomens. Let's see. Let's see. I mean, if it did, the both would know that we are learning about butterflies and moths. Well, I mean, not necessarily. We have a one in about 800 chance of a butterfree appearing. Sorry, I don't know the exact number of Pokemon that exist. <laughs> Somewhere around the 800 range. Moths have larger scales on their wings that make them look more dense and fluffy. Butterflies, on the other hand, possess fine scales. This difference is possible is possibly due to the need for moths to conserve heat during the cooler nights, whereas butterflies are able to absorb solar radiation. More than six Pokemon, at least. Let's see, one in eight hundred. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hey, hey, there's always a chance. And yeah, yeah, fluffy boys. I think that's one of the reasons, like, I prefer moths over butterflies. Like, moths look and feel fluffy. Have you ever held a atlas moth? They're amazing. <laughs> fluffy critters? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I first got... Yeah, it was my volunteer- when I first started volunteering there, they let me hold the atlas moths. So, it's basically- it felt- it's like as their wings were flapping on my hand. That it felt- yeah, it felt so fuzzy, I loved it. Oh, nice! You too, Lucasia? Yes, yes, they're fluffy winged boys. Yeah, a atlas moths are cool. <laughs> I love them. So if we have time before the hour is up, I think I will also do uh, do a, a little lesson on an atlas moth. 
Pretty sure we have an Atlas mod at Mother's house. Big boy. Yes, yes. Um, I believe uh, the largest Atlas moth ever discovered um, had a wingspan of 24 centimeters. Um, the average wingspan is between 12 and 14 centimeters. Which, um, the one that I held actually, yeah, it was a girl and she had a, a 16 centimeter wingspan. Let's see. Structure of the body. Oh, wait, no, we already read that. Let's see. This difference is possible is possibly due to their need for moths to conserve heat during the cooler nights, whereas butterflies are able to absorb solar radiation. Oh, yep, yep, we read that. And be let's see. Last year, I went to an insectarium to go to the moth section, and there were like three to five atlas moths, and the females went and sat on my hand, and then and then on my um oh on my head, and then on my hand. And it's like ah, oh, so cute. <gasps> yes. Yeah, I think I think no matter what, we're we're gonna do a little lesson on Atlas moths. <laughs> Let's see, and here we go, the taxonomic issues. Let's see, a major study combining morphological and molecular data concluded that Hesperidae, Papilodidae, Pyridae, Lycandidae, and Rionodidae could all be strongly supported as monophilic, uh, no, monophilic clades. But the status of Nymphidaly is equi equivocal. <laughs> Let's see. Lycanidae and Rionidae were considered as sister taxia Peplionodiae as the outgroup to the rest of the true butterflies. But the location of Pyridae within the pattern of descent was unclear, with different lines of evidence suggesting different conclusions. The data suggested that the moths as Heliolidae are indeed more closely related to the butterflies than to other moths. Let's see, in studying, we are going to learn about loads of stuff in test. Um, Atlas moth. <laughs> well, hey, hey, I plan on doing this for a long time, so we're going to learn more about, we're, we're going to learn more about more species than just the Atlas moth. That just happens to be my favorite. <laughs> so if you if you want to get a passing grade in my class, you need to know the Atlas Moth. <laughs> Some older classifications recognize additional families. For example, the Donadia, let's see, Donadia, Helioconidae, Lipididae, and Satyridae. Atlas Moss priority people. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> but modern classifications treat these as some families within the Nymphalidae. Okay. Unlike, let's see, the four stages in the life cycle of a butterfly. Okay. Unlike many insects, butterflies do not experience a nymph period, an immature insect whose form is already that of an adult but instead go through the pupil stage, which lies between the larva and the adult stage. Let's see. <laughs> Question one, what is the atlas moth? A, atlas moth. B, not atlas moth. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So they go through egg, larva, known as caterpillar, pupa, chrysalis, and adult butterfly. So, first stage, egg. D, cat. D, last moth. <laughs> cat moth. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's see. Egg. Butterfly eggs consist of a hard ridged outer layer of shell called the chorion. This is lined with a thin coating of wax, wax, which prevents the egg from drying out before the larva has had time to fully develop. Feline moth. <laughs> Each egg contains a number of tiny funnel-shaped openings at one end, called micropiles. Phyllis moth. <laughs> I didn't realize there was a quid, uh, a quiz. I had to shower, so I wasn't paying attention. Sag. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it it'll be a very easy quiz. A very easy quiz, Jade Ride. You just have to know what my favorite what my favorite moth is, and that is the Atlas moth. <laughs> That's all you have to know. <laughs> Let's see. 
The purpose of these holes is to allow sperm to enter and fertilize the egg. Butterfly and moth eggs vary greatly in size between species, but they are either all spherical or ovate. <laughs> yes, just like back in school, the class has descended into chaos. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> yes, yes. Atlas moths are amazing. You cannot change my mind. <laughs> Let's see. Butterfly eggs are fixed to a leaf with a special glue that hardens rapidly. As it hardens, it contracts, deforming the shape of the butterfly. This glue is easily seen surrounding the base of every egg, forming a meniscus. The same glue is produced by a pupa to secure the sete of the creme master. This glue is so hard that to that silk pad to which the set Sete are glued cannot be separated. Yeah, so when looking uh, when looking for butterfly eggs and uh, butterfly and moth eggs, they're going to be very, very tiny, like the size of a pencil dot. Let's see. Ooh, I remembered when I was in an insectarium, you need to let the caterpillar move to your hand. If you pick it up, it will be terrified, and if you hold too hard, it would damage slash break the abdomen. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I think you were here, Kazia, when I said that we have to we had to find them before they uh, before they turned into caterpillars because some of them sting. <laughs> and you get the brown ones here. Oh, nice. There are a lot of brown caterpillars, <laughs> so I can't pinpoint out which one. Let's see. No, we only get Atlas Moth. <laughs> oh my gosh. Goodness. Let's see. I came here half an hour before and I didn't realize you said that. <laughs> yeah, no worries. But yeah. Yeah, so we we try to get them while they're in their egg stage so that we can incubate them. Uh <laughs> anarchy. <laughs> Let's see. You did see the brown moth that was in my apartment, right? Oh, did you post that earlier? I think so. Like, did you post that today or was it a while back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send me a picture. Okay, I'm think I'm thinking I'm trying to remember what it looked like. Atlas moth for life. <laughs> yep, yep. I have too many followers. Let's see, that is a complex word my brain can't handle. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. A lot of this is just learning learning Greek and Latin. Thank you for your patience, guys. I think I got everybody. Now, let's continue. Okay, so now we are... Let's see. I have too many followers, <laughs> Mitchie 2022. <laughs> no, I, I mean... Basically, it wasn't letting me click your name for some, for some reason, Kazuya. So I had to scroll through my followers to find you for some reason to let me message you. I'm not sure why. Or whisper to you. Okay. Now let's continue. So caterpillars. Larvae or caterpillar caterpillars are multi-leg eating machines. They consume plant leaves and spend practically all of their time in search of food. <laughs> Uh, we will remember this when you become a mega star and send you this quote. Yeah, no, no. It was probably just my phone being weird. <laughs> uh, that, uh, that's probably never going to happen. Like, when I first started streaming, I made a promise that I would play um, the worst Spyro game ever, uh, which is Spyro Enter the Dragonfly, if I reached a thousand followers. And at that, I was like, okay, guys, see you in 20 years. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
<laughs> yep. Okay. Caterpillars mature through a series of stages called instars. Ah, uh, yes, your phone has altered the audio and altered it to I have too many followers. <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Not that I want to lose any, but it's just like. Why are you guys here? <laughs> I'm not interesting. <laughs> Let's see. Spyro? I heard Spyro. Did you know there are butterflies in Spyro? <laughs> no, no, I did not, Spoon. I totally didn't know that sparks eat butterflies. <laughs> Caterpillars mature through a series of stages called instars. Near the end of each instar, the larvae go undergoes a process called apolis, which is in which the cuticle, the tough covering that is a mixture of chitin and specialized protein, is released from the epidermis and the epidermis begins to form a new cuticle beneath. At the end of each instar, the larva molts the old cuticle, and the new cuticle is rapidly hardens and pigments. Development of butterfly wing patterns begin at the last larval instar. You are interesting and funny and cool. Do not talk bad about yourself. I'm sorry, I'm working on it. I still, I mean, I've, I, like, I've been in therapy for a while, but I still have trouble believing that I'm an interesting human being. <laughs> and wing development in larval stage. Butterflies belong to the special and prolific lineage of the homo <laughs> yeah. holometabolous insects, which means that wings or wing pads are not visible on the outside of the larva. But they, when larvae are dissected, tiny developing wing discs can be found on the second and third thoracic segments in place of the spiracles that are apparent on abdominal segments. Let's see, I, f I feel yeah, I talk bad about myself all the time. Yeah, we, we need to learn to stop to do we We need to learn to stop doing that, J-Rod. It's, it's not doing us any good. <laughs> they gay insects. <laughs> Wing, let's see, wings develop in association with a trachea that runs along the face of the wing and surrounded by a thin preodial, let's see, uh, Prepodial membrane, which is linked to the outer epidermis of the larva by tiny duct. Helping? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> wing, wing discs are very small until the last level in star when they increase dramatically in size, are invaded by branching trachea from the wing base that precede the formation of the wing's veins and begin to express molecular markers and patterns associated with several landmarks of the wings. <laughs> there we go, that's better. <laughs> Brain and fingers disconnected again. <laughs> no worries, that happens to me too. <laughs> there, there, sweetie. <laughs> it's like, I, I hope you get some rest. Because <laughs> hopefully that'll help you. Near pupation, the wings are forced outside the epidermis underneath, let's see, under, under pressure from the hem, let's see, hemolip, the fluid in the open circulatory system. And although they are initially quite flexible and fragile, by the time the pupa breaks free of the larval cuticle, they have adhered tightly to the outer cuticle of the pupa, an, op, an optic pupa. Within hours, the wings form a cuticle so hard and well-jointed to the body that pupa can be picked up and handled without damage to the wings. I don't know, I'm still, I still have to wear gloves whenever I handle stuff. <laughs> and pupa. When the larva exceeds a minimum weight at a particular time of day, it will stop feeding and begin wandering in a quest for a suitable pupation site, usually the underside of a leaf. That is true. The larva transforms into a pupa, chrysalis, which then transforms into a butterfly by metamorphosis. To transform from the miniature wings visible on the outside of the pupa into a large structure, structures usable for flight, the pupal wings undergo rapid mitosis and absorb a great deal of nutrients. If one wing is surgically removed early on, the other three will grow into a large size. 
In the pupa, the wing forms a structure that becomes compressed from top to bottom and pleated with proximal to distal ends as it grows, so that it may rapidly be unfolded to its full adult size. Several boundaries seen in the adult color pattern are marked by changes in the expression of particular transcription factors in the early pupa. Let's see, adult butterfly. The adult, sexually mature stage of the insect is known as the imago. The Lepido as Lepidoptera, butterflies have four wings that are covered in tiny scales. But unlike most moths, the fore and hind wings are not hooked together, per let's see, permitting a more graceful flight. A butterfly has six legs. The larva also has six true legs and a number of prolegs. After it emerges from its pupil stage, it cannot fly for some time because the wings have not yet unfolded. A newly emerged butterfly needs to spend some time inflating its wings with blood and letting them dry, during which time it is extremely vul vulnerable to predators. Ooh, yeah, yeah, I remember seeing this. Let's see, habits. Butterflies live primarily on nectar from flowers. Some also derive from nourishment from pollen, tree sap, rotting fruit, dung, and dissolved minerals in wet sand or dirt. Butterflies play an important ecological role as pollinators. As adults, butterflies are able to consume liquids only by means of their proboscis. They re regularly feed on nectar and sip water from damp patches. This they do for water, for energy from the sugars in nectar, and for sodium and other minerals that are vital for their reproduction. Several species of butterflies need more sodium than provided by the nectar they drink from flowers. As such, they are attracted to sodium in salt, which the males give often, often give to the females to ensure fertility. As human sweat contains significant qualities of salt, they sometimes land on people to the delight of the young at heart everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah, they 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 absolutely can spoon, because yeah, but uh, hummingbird feeders can also act as uh, as butterfly feeders too. And oh, a clefairy appeared. And there we go. Oh, uh, be sure to put an exclamation point before the, uh, before the polka catch. There you go. <laughs> Let's see. Besides damp patches, some butterflies also visit dung, rotting fruit, or carcasses to attain the essential minerals they need. Yep, a another way to attract butterflies is to have... <laughs> Have a carcass in your yard. There you go. Oh, hey, you got you got another green a green creature. You got you got a turtwig. <laughs> Let's see. Butterflies sense the air for scents, wind, and nectar using their antennae. Then the antennae come in various shapes and colors. The Hesperids have a pointed angle or hook to the antennae. Some butterflies, such as the monarch butterfly, are migratory. Indeed, the migration time of the monarch butterfly far exceeds the lifetime of an individual monarch. So, butterflies will save us from the zombies? I I'm not sure they can stop the zombies outright, but they'll, they'll, they'll definitely, they would definitely hoard on a zombie. And woo, looks like we all caught it. Nice. Yep, uh, basically the Pokemon community game goes by Pokemon Go rules. It's like we can all potentially catch it. And etymology. The old English word for butterfly was butterfly Butterfly. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pog. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Let's see. It was butter flioge, apparently because butterflies were thought to steal milk. 
that's weird. Uh, a similar word occurs in Dutch, originating from the same belief. Uh, the, the more you know. My focus is beyond 100% in this study right now. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'll, yeah, I'm definitely going to keep this up if I can. Maybe not every Sunday, just so I can give myself a break. But at least every two weeks, I will, I will do this because I'm having fun too. <laughs> and this is considered to have led to the development of its present name form, Butterfly. <laughs> Let's see, an alternative folk etymology, current in Great Britain, is it originated as a contra let's see, contraction for term butter-colored fly, referring to the brimstone butterfly Genopertex ramni, often the first butterfly of spring. Earlier, it was mistakenly considered that the word butterfly came from the metathesis or flutter by. Let's see, were thought to steal milk? When I was younger, I thought they stole butter. Well, I think that's kind of what it's going after. Because, uh, let's see, the old... Yeah, because it looks like... Yeah. Butterfliology. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to look up that word. Yeah, because, like, uh, you get, you get butter from milk, so maybe that's where it was going. <laughs> no, get it. Butter flies away <laughs> oh my goodness oh and here we have some pictures so we have the scar swallowtail <laughs> flying butter <laughs> nice <laughs> Let's see. Is the Atlas Moss somewhere on here? Butterfree. Yeah, exactly. Oh, um. Actually, J Rod, this might be it. Yeah, common buckeye. Free the butter 2022. <laughs> oh my goodness. Possibly. Butter free int. <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe not. Because, yeah, I don't think there's orange in that one. Maybe a little bit. I am now invested. Because <laughs> it also kind of looks like that. It's like there's 140,000 species. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to search. They've got like big white wings. Here, let's see. Oh, let, let's read a little bit on moths as well because. Oh, okay, so down here, there's the Atlas Moth. We'll go down there later. <laughs> Let's see. So, a moth is an insect closely related to the butterfly. Both are of the uh, order Lepidotera. What is a moth but an unloved butterfly? <laughs> true, true. <gasps> wait, wait, actually. <gasps> yeah, there it is. That's another cool moth. It's like, that's, that's a Pokemon. 
<laughs> All right. So both are of the order Lepidoptera. The division of Lepidopterans into moths and butter butterflies is a popular, not scientific, distinction. While butterflies are considered to be a natural group having descended from a single common ancestor, moths are an artificial group defined as any Lepidoptera that is not a butterfly. However, neither of them hold formal taxonomic rank. Yep. That's straight up and yes, we are in the moth section, finally. <laughs> you're gonna go because you're sleepy? Hey, no worries, Kazuya. Yeah. Oh yeah, it would be 5 a.m. for you right now. Well, I hope you have a good rest and I hope to see you next time. So yeah, have a good night. Let's see, popular defined, most species of Lepidoptera are moths. And yep, and about 70 of the 80 families of the order. Butterflies can consider to be a small group that arose from within the moths. <laughs> in general, moths are considered to be distinct from butterflies in that moths are chiefly nocturnal, where butterflies are diurnal. Moths have comb-like or feathery antenna, while butterflies have thin, slender, and filamentous antennae. And moths have a stodier and more furry-looking body, duller coloring, and proportionally smaller wings than butterflies. However, there are many exceptions to each of these characters. Yeah, 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 see, uh, Michi, don't forget Atlas Moths are priority. <laughs> yep, I think we're gonna, we're gonna take a quick look at Atlas Moths over there because, yeah, it has been about an hour and my, my throat is starting to give out. <laughs> so yeah, we won't be going for too much longer. I just, I def, like, Moths section is short, so I just want to read through that. <laughs> Let's see. However, there are many exceptions to each of these characteristics. Let's see. Moths are important economically, offering both positive insects such as producing silk or negative impacts such as agricultural pests and clothing pests. The harmony in nature can be seen in some species of moths serving as pollinators of night-blooming flowers. This allows the plants to reproduce while the moths receive nectar in exchange. People who study moths and, bu and butterflies are lepidoterrorists. The study of moths is known as mothing. This later term gave rise to the term mother for someone who takes part in this, this activity. Sometimes written with a hyphen inserted, mother, allows mother to be distinguished from the word of a female parent. In spoken English, confusion does not arise as the two are pronounced differently. Okay. Economic significance of moths. Moths, and more particularly their caterpillars, are a major agricultural pest in many parts of the world. The caterpillar of the gypsy moth causes severe damage to forests in northeast United States, where it is an exotic species. In temperate climates, the cobbling moth causes extensive damage, especially to fruit farms. In tropical and subtropical climates, the diamondback moth is perhaps the most serious pest of brachiate, let's see, brass. Brassicasis crops. Several moth species in the family Tinidae are commonly regarded as pests because their larvae eat fabric such as cloths and blankets, blankets made from natural pro protein, protein cases fibers such as wool or silk. They are less likely to eat mixed materials containing artificial fibers. Nephala, let's see, nephaline, the chemical used in mothballs, is considered effective. But there are concerns over its effects on health. Moth larvae are not killed by freezing the items that they infest. Moths are sturdy and usually more resistant to pesticides than mosquitoes and flies. Some moths are fond. Most notably is the silkworm, the larvae of the domesticated moth Bombyx mori, farmed for the silk in which it builds its cocoon. The silk industry produces over 130 million kilograms of raw silk, worth about 25 2,500 million worldwide. Wow. Not all silk is produced by the Bombyx mori. There are several species of Saturnidae that are farmed for their silk, such as the Atheist moth, the Chinese oak silk moth, the Assam silk moth, and the Japanese silk moth. The Mopane worm, caterpillar of the Genobrasse bile from the family Saturnidae, is a significant food source in southern Africa. I, I heard a cat scratching. Night blooming flowers. Let's see. Oh, no. We're right here. 
Moths are apparently attracted to light, or more specifically, are known to circle, light bright, circle bright objects. The reason for this behavior is not known. It may, be moths it may be moths navigate by maintaining a constant angular relationship to a bright celestial light, such as the moon. But on encountering a bright artificial light, it navigates by maintaining a constant angle to the light, resulting in the moth flying in a spiral until it hits the light source. Hiso suggests the reason for moths circling lights may have to do with the visual disorientation called mock band. Night blooming flowers usually depend on moths or baths for pollination, and artificial lighting can draw moths away from the flowers, offending the plant's ability to reproduce. Light pollution is coming under increased scrutiny as the source of many subtle ecological changes. Yep. Let's see. And here we have a list of various, various moth species. I think, yeah, a lot of people really like the Luna moth. And yep, the Atlas moth, my favorite, Atticus Atlas. Let's see, and difference between moths and butterflies. Moths and butterflies are often confused with each other, which is understandable given the division is a popular distinction not based on principles of biological classification. Sometimes the names Rup, let's see, Ropalocera butterflies and Heterocera moths are used to formalize the popular distinction. Among common distinctions, as those noted above, including antennae, coloration, body structure, and nocturnal and diurnal habit, other means of distinguishing a moth from a butterfly include, include pupae. Most moth caterpillars fill a cocoon within each they metamorphose, and most butterflies form an exposed pupa, which is the chrysalis. And the position of the rings rest, moths usually rest at wing's side, while butterflies frequently fold their wings above their back. However, there are exceptions to every rule, and uh, see the difference between butterfly and moth for more discretion. Okay. So here we have. Yes, look at that fuzzy boy. <laughs> I love him. And it's like one of my favorite things is like see the tips of um see the tips of their wings and oh hey nice right before we ended stream another Pokemon appeared. There we go. But yeah. So the tips of their wings looks like the head of a snake. <laughs> Poke. <laughs> so yeah, it's so that's part of their defense mechanism is like even though they're big, they are still like an insect. They are kind of small. Uh this like, this makes it look like there's a snake, and, you know, most creatures, not all, but that does kind of give them the, lets them give them the benefit of the doubt that a predator won't go after them. There you go. Yeah, the, oh yeah, this is just information on the, yeah, so we'll have to look that up next. Oh, this is an interesting one. Like, look at that. That's so cool. <laughs> I love moths. Oh, will you look at that? Oh my gosh, it's polka dotted. So yeah, I am... <laughs> it looks like a cinnamon. Oh yeah, the previous one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nice. So yeah, so basically my plan going forward, now that we have the basics down, which basically a uh, moth was just um, kind of an over, uh, like a very short overview of what butterflies are. Um, so yeah, next time uh, my plan is to go through different species uh, during the coming Sundays. But yeah, but I think I will stick it uh, stick to an hour because um, if I talk for any longer my, my my voice is gonna give out so yeah so that's gonna be that's gonna be it for today's educational stream I do want to thank all of you guys for joining me today I really do appreciate you guys coming to uh, coming to this because this is something that I really really love and I hope to pass on some information to you guys hold up is it not showing Oh, oh, no, oh, no, it was. Okay. 
So, what we're gonna do... <gasps> yeah, yeah! Bye, J-Rod! Thank you so much for coming today! Let's see, it's like wildlife facts redeemed, but longer and free. <laughs> Yep, that's exactly that's exactly what I intended this to be, Spoon. So, let's go see if we can go raid somebody. Let's see. I actually I don't think I've raided this person yet. This is someone another person that I met on Instagram. Let's see, they are playing Minecraft. They've been going for about two hours. So I think they'll be going longer. So, there's raid one. Here's raid two. Alright, so next playing stream is going to be uh, later tonight. We'll be playing more Pokemon TCG. Uh, I hope to see you there. If not, I hope you all guys have a great night. So I want to thank all the lurkers, all of the chatters. Like, you guys really, really chatted today. That made me really happy. Thank you for being so interested in this. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Squid. I thought, I thought you fell asleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, yep, yep, they are still definitely playing. Okay, okay. So we're gonna raid... Uh, we're gonna raid Simon. They're playing Minecraft. But, yeah! <laughs> but yeah, if you happen to be here tonight, Squid, I'll, 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 I'll try and let you get that before, before I think. <laughs> like, I just wasn't thinking. I'm sorry, Squid. But yeah, I want to thank all the lurkers, all the chatters, everybody who viewed tonight. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, letting me educate you and read stuff about moths and butterflies. It made me really happy. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye!